Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the batteries of electric cars. The success of electric cars depends upon how far, what kind of range an electric car can have on the road before they have to refuel. And of course, in the case of electric cars, the batteries take a long time to recharge, so refueling will take hours. And so you really can only drive the range of the battery of the car. So the success had to do with how well they construct a battery that can hold as much charge as possible. And it really comes down to how much will the battery weigh, how big will the battery weigh, or how big will the battery be for every kilowatt hour that it can store. So yes, car batteries for electric cars, their storage is, is in terms of kilowatt hours because they can store so much that talking about amp hours is really not the right number to use here. So to really start using kilowatt hours, and the kilowatt hour is a lot of energy to store in a car battery. So here we have four models as an example. We have the Mitsubishi electric vehicle, the Nissan Leaf, the Ford Focus, the electric vehicle Ford Focus, and the Tesla Roadster. And notice the storage capacity of these batteries, 16 kilowatt hours, 24 kilowatt hours, 23 kilowatt hours, and 56 kilowatt hours for the Tesla Roadster. Now, if we convert 56 kilowatt hours in terms of amp hours, notice we know that 50 amp hours is equal to 0.6 kilowatt hours from a previous video. So when we do the conversion, notice that the battery of the Tesla Roadster can contain 4,667 amp hours of energy. That's an enormous quantity. Now, a typical car battery is made from two volt cells. So they use six two volt cells to come up with 12 volts and they're all connected in series. Now, batteries that are used for electric cars, well, they don't build up to much higher voltage. They just put a lot of these batteries in parallel so they can produce an enormous amount of current to keep the car moving. Notice that these batteries are very large. The mass of these batteries, or the weight of these batteries, in kilograms and pounds. For the Mitsubishi, it's 147 kilograms, or over 300 pounds of batteries. For the Nissan Leaf, the mass is 272 kilograms, which means that you have 600 pounds of batteries in a Nissan Leaf. And for the Tesla Roadster, to hold this much charge, the battery had a mass of over 500 kilograms, which is over 1,200 pounds for the battery. That's a huge amount of weight to be carrying around in a car to be able to store that energy. So what is the range of these cars? Well, the absolute maximum range in kilometers and miles for the Mitsubishi was 128 kilometers or 80 miles. For the Nissan Leaf was 160 kilometers or 100 miles. And for the Tesla Roadster, it's 352 kilometers or 220 miles. For the Ford Focus, which is a new model on the market, it said that it was 122 kilometers or 76 miles. Now, you'd say that's a pretty decent range. I can get to working back every day and then plug my car back in and charge it. But you have to be careful. The maximum range is not really the useful range because there's a limit. You cannot discharge your battery more than 60%. At least don't do it very often or you really are declining the life of your battery. There's only so many cycles a battery can go through, roughly 3,000 cycles if you keep it the discharge to no more than 60%, but if you start discharging up to 80%, you can very quickly reduce the number of cycles to 2,000 rather than 3,000, so the life of your battery will be reduced by quite a bit. So in a pinch, you can go ahead and push it, but just don't do it very often and not too far. So if you keep it at 60%, the range would be about 140 miles for the Tesla Roadster, about 62 miles for the Nissan Leaf, and about 55 miles for the Mitsubishi EV. So if you're going to buy an electric car, just realize that you can really not drive it more than the real range. And again, these ranges are dependent upon the type of driving that you do. It's mostly highway driving, so there's a lot of stop and go. Those numbers will go down even further. So you must consider that as well before you buy an electric vehicle. But as you can see, if you do a full store of 56 kilowatt hours, and let's say that you pay 15 or 20 cents per kilowatt hour at, at 10 cents per kilowatt hour that would be five dollars and 60 cents to fill up at 20 cents it would be 11 dollars to fill up so that gives you kind of an idea that the cost for putting electricity in your car 
isn't that bad. It's just the initial cost of the car is probably quite a bit and you have to pay a lot to buy one of those cars. And then you can't drive very long distances any one given day because the battery just cannot hold that much charge. So hopefully that helps you understand these car batteries a little bit more. And you can say that, yes, they've made quite a bit of advancement, but the ultimate solution always is that if you want to be able to drive farther and hold more energy, you just have to make the battery bigger. And notice that some of these batteries are quite big. That's what we know about electric car batteries.